I'm Kelly Keough and I crave carbs. Who doesn't? It's healthy to want energy from your food, especially if you're physically active. So if you pump iron, power walk, play tennis or salsa dance like me, you need real food and good carbs to feed your muscles. By real food, I mean complete nutrition that replenishes, energizes and keeps you going through any type of workout. Today on The Sweet Truth, we're going to make buckwheat pancakes, kasha haystacks, and a wild dessert pizza, all guaranteed to pump you up. Okay, so we're here today to make protein and carb-rich sweets that taste great and help you get the most out of your workout. Just like cars can run out of gas, so can our muscles. So we need glycogen to refuel our bodies. When we run out of gas, we refuel with... You guessed it, carbohydrates. But not all carbs are created equal, and I'm here to tell you that the right carbs make all the difference, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Well, what makes a good carb? One that breaks down slowly, like buckwheat, the carb that we're gonna use today, and is absorbed into the bloodstream slowly. Okay, well, speaking of the right kind of carbs, let's start with a breakfast recipe that not only is packed with whole grain sweetness, but can be taken on the road for those early morning yoga classes and soccer games at sunrise. It's called the banana buckwheat pancake. This is a bodybuilding recipe that uses high lean protein and slow burning carbs like our buckwheat. So to start, we're going to put it all in a blender and this is how we do it. Now when I use my one cup of buckwheat groats, I soak them in water overnight. So you're going to do one cup of buckwheat to two and a half cups of buckwheat groats. And you let them go in the refrigerator and they'll soak overnight. Then you strain them in the morning and they're all ready to go into the blender. Why do I do this? Because the digestion is so much better when you soak your grains. Now buckwheat is not related to wheat. This is a gluten-free grain. It is actually related to rhubarb and has lots of fiber and protein. And when I eat these buckwheat pancakes, I don't even feel heavy, but I'm very full and satisfied. So that's the first thing that's gonna go into our blender here. As you can see them. Next, I'm going to do one cup of egg whites. I separate them myself because why? That makes a fluffier pancake, but if you don't have time, you can use the prepackaged egg whites. Next, I'm going to do actually one banana organic, cut up, it's gonna go in. Why am I using banana? Well, to sweeten this recipe, there's so much protein in this recipe that the carbs will break down more slowly, and for potassium, because we're gonna, we're gonna work out after this. Then, a teaspoon of cinnamon to stimulate our metabolism and get it going. Also, one tablespoon of agave, that's not a lot. This is gonna make a lot of pancakes for the whole family. This is a batch for the whole family today and one dropper of vanilla stevia. So let's put this on my mount here. And it's going to blend so quickly, so take it slow. Now that I've got it blended, let's add my half cup of almond milk. That's all it really needs. The next thing I do is I pour it in my bowl because guess what's gonna go in there next? Blueberries. For, of course, their, their vitamins, phytochemicals, antioxidants. These are anti-cancer berries, really. We're going to put these in. I'll save a few for after because this is also going to add sweetness and fun to our recipe. 
I'm going to take this over to a preheated pan over here and we're gonna make pancakes. So I keep my heat on low because this batter is a little delicate. And I'll make three pancakes. Cute. This is going to take a couple minutes on each side. In the process, you want to watch each batch of pancakes because the brittle will get hotter and hotter and hotter. Now I wanted to tell you that this recipe is a bodybuilding recipe and I got it from my brother Patrick about 10 years ago because he's a personal trainer and bodybuilder. The way bodybuilders make it is with oats. Oats can be cross-contaminated with wheat, so I wanted to avoid gluten. That's why I picked the buckwheat groat. Remember to soak it overnight so that it's more digestible. Now, yeah, athletics runs in my family because my father is an ex-Marine and retired head football coach. So needless to say, exercise and discipline was abundant in my house but I benefited from it. I learned that exercise is a great part of life and now I've coupled it with this amazing breakfast that I'll get to eat before I go work out. Now, watch the pan. I can tell it's getting a little hotter. So I think I'm going to get my plate and plate these babies up. Great. The next thing I wanna do is not use maple syrup. It's use dark agave instead, because dark agave is rich in minerals, has a very low glycemic index of 11 and below, and has only 15 calories per teaspoon. So I only need a couple teaspoons on my pancakes. And let's top with more fresh blueberries. How about that? Let me take a test. I can't wait to eat this whole stack. But now I have a sports nutrition question for you. How does food turn into glycogen? Well, when we come back, I'll have the answer for you in an athlete's dream meal, the power pizza. Okay, we're back and talking about turning food into glycogen. How does it happen? Well, it takes vitamins, minerals, and a small amount of protein to stimulate your insulin. This is the key to transforming carbs to glycogen, your main muscle fuel. So it's okay to eat. A fun way to fuel up is with my sweet truth twist on everybody's favorite food, Pizza. The good news is, is that my pizza is not only guilt-free, bloat-free, and sugar-free, it's a dessert pie topped with a chocolate ricotta. This power pizza recipe is a perfect pre-game meal. We're going to start with the dough, and in our stand-up mixer, add our dry ingredients. I'm going to start with 3 fourths cup of gluten-free baking flour which is a mixture of brown rice flour, potato starch, and we're gonna also add one cup of tapioca flour. This is a very light gluten-free flour, and because we want our pizza to be light. Then I'm going to add protein to this pizza dough, and the first thing I'm going to start with is our lactose-free whey protein powder. I know you bodybuilders are digging that. We're gonna put in a third of a cup of maca. Maca is a Peruvian root vegetable that nourishes the endocrine system, gives athletic performance a boost, and also stimulates libido. In it goes. And this can also replace your wheat flours because maca is gluten-free. We're going to add a half teaspoon of salt. And to sweeten up our dough, you wouldn't believe every pizza dough uses sugar to sweeten its dough. So we're going to add a little bit of stevia. Okay, in it goes. Mix that up. Now, I wanna move over to my yeast. In my yeast, I'm going to add also our stevia to our hot water. 
a half cup of hot water at 110 degrees, and a tablespoon of our dry active yeast. So let's get that going to sit. Yeast needs sugars to get it activated. Then I'm going to make a little elixir with olive oil, two tablespoons, and a tablespoon of coconut toddy, which is really coconut vinegar. We need to add this to our gluten-free flour. So I'm going to start mixing this. Add our elixir. Great. Then I'm going to add my cup of egg whites, two egg whites. Now my yeast. I'm going to beat on high for three minutes and scrape down the sides and then beat for another minute. Let's scrape down the sides. This dough is behaving beautifully for a gluten-free dough. You might expect a little bit more stickiness and that's okay. But this dough is just a little sticky, not too much. And beat it for one more minute. Okay. I'm going to leave this in the mixer for a bit while I go now to my topping. Okay, let's start with a cup and a half of low-fat ricotta cheese. And we're going to add some agave. I'm going to keep a little extra to drizzle on top. We're going to add our vanilla. Mix this up. Just fold it in. You don't want to over mix because ricotta is already a soft cheese. It all just gets really folded in. That's the action you want to see. And to sweeten it up, we're going to use a dropper of vanilla stevia and a dropper of milk chocolate stevia. So our ricotta, which is like a cannoli filling, is going to have a chocolatey taste to it. Now I'm going to add a third of a cup of carob chips to brighten up this, this cheese. And you can also use grain sweetened chocolate if you want, but I want gluten free chips, so I'm going to use unsweetened carob chips. And I've already got sweet in there from the agave and the stevia. Agave and stevia are staples in my pantry for sweetening, and who would think that you would ever use them in a pizza? Look at how pretty that looks. Now, I'm going to show you that this gluten free dough, let me remove the paddle needs a little bit of gluten-free baking technique. And my sweet truth tip is take some olive oil, put it on your fingers, grease up your hands, and scoop this baby right out of the bowl. Ha <laughs> ha, look at this nice dough. Now the next thing that I do is let it rise, but you have to press it out onto your pizza pan. So what I've done is I've taken a pizza pan, I wanna show you, and I've covered it with two tablespoons of ground flaxseed. Can you see that? So instead of our cornmeal, we're going to use flax on the bottom because I'm just super healthy on the bottom and the top. This is already risen and, and this pizza dough is ready to go. So let me get my topping. Look at this beautiful chocolate chip topping. And you just put it on. Beautiful. And then with a little wrist action, spread your yummy, delicious, heavenly, sugar-free, wheat-free topping, dessert topping on this pizza. I'm drooling already. And then I've got a little bit more agave on top. I'm gonna do a drizzle. Yep, this looks like a big chocolate chip cookie made in heaven. And I'm going to the oven now. Now we're gonna set the oven at 375 and we're gonna bake for 20 minutes. Put it in. Here is our finished pizza. So the best thing to do is to remove your pizza and let it sit on a wire rack. Why? Because gluten-free doughs can get soggy unless they have air circulating underneath them. Well, the one thing to remember is that this crust will work for other sweet toppings or even savory toppings. Just keep it healthy and you'll be good to go. All right, I'm gonna let that cool. And I just wanna tell you, 
We've pumped you up with power pizza and pancakes, and our next pumped up protein snack is one of my favorites and a sure winner. So stick around for more of the sweet truth. Every time I tried to give up snacks, I just wanted more, more, more. But now I let myself have them every day. This next recipe is fast, easy, and fun. Better yet, it serves as the perfect after workout munchie. And it's great for the family on the run. Kasha haystacks or chocolate granola balls on the go. This recipe contains buckwheat, which has a lot of fiber and protein and also a protein powder added to it to give it another oomph. And yet it's sweet and, and it's, it's gonna be a little mini meal. All right, so here we go. We're gonna start this recipe. I've got my double boiler with water underneath ready to rock because I'm gonna start with my chips. I'm gonna use a quarter cup of grain sweetened chocolate chips and another half cup of unsweetened carob chips. Into the bowl it goes. Now I'm using a combination because it's going to melt better in our double boiler. I'm going to also add two tablespoons of agave. Also for our sweetener, some stevia, some vanilla stevia, two droppers full. Stevia and agave are staples in my pantry. I don't live without them. And this, this recipe is so easy and the ingredients are really minimal. Just a little vanilla, I'm sure you have it in your pantry too, and cinnamon. Then our melted two tablespoons of organic coconut oil, a medium chain fat. It will not make you fat, it actually speeds up your metabolism. It's great on my hair too, by the way. I'm going to mix this up and put it over into the double boiler to melt, so follow me. I can hear the water boiling under my double boiler. And within minutes, these chips are going to melt. Now if you just melt unsweetened carob chips, they get really gritty because ground up carob is gritty, so that's why I add also the grain sweetened chocolate. Now what do I mean by grain sweetened? Well, it could be sweetened with barley malt. So if you're gluten intolerant, make sure you check the back of the package because you can buy gluten-free chips. This is melting up nicely. I'd like for you guys to see that. See how that's melting? That's because we added the coconut oil. Beautiful. I'm really excited because this recipe whips up within minutes. I'm ready. I'm going to grab my towel here. I'm going to turn off my stove and come back over to the island. Okay. I'm going to add now just a tablespoon of raw cacao nibs for crunch, for that deep chocolate taste, and to enhance my mood even more. Then some goji berries, the hippest little berries around, packed with trace minerals, vitamin C, and uh, amino acids. Then we have two tablespoons of chocolate protein powder. That's what makes this a mini meal. Stir this. Because next comes our kasha, which is just another name for roasted buckwheat. Russian people use this to make a savory dish, but I'm going to use it to make a sweet granola. So let's put in about half a cup first. We'll do it slowly, and I want to show you that you're going to fold the roasted buckwheat into the chocolate mixture. Okay, and then we can do the rest. And you just press it really gently in. That is wonderful. This is working great. And I'll just put the rest in now. So that was about a cup of roasted kasha. 
You can also buy buckwheat hulled and raw. It has a different color, more of a grayish color. This kasha is red. The next step, you're gonna take mini liners. Okay, I'm gonna make about six. And you're gonna scoop them out with your, tea, with your teaspoon. Beautiful. And then you can just mold them right into the little liners. I'll do another one for you. Last one. Perfect. I'm gonna throw these in, so come with me. You can do them in the refrigerator, freezer, doesn't matter. Here they are. If you'd like to let them uh, chill a little bit, that's fine, but I'm going to take a bite right away. These haystacks are a perfect snack after a long night of salsa. They're also the perfect nutritious after play snack for kids. When we come back, more about sports nutrition and the carb connection. Don't go away.